Hello everyone, so we've got Blender 4.0 finally released, which is going to be pretty huge I'm sure, but we've also released a patch version to our 3D rendering slash distributed rendering add-on to support it because we noticed when we were testing our most latest stable version, which was version 064, it didn't work. So we have patched that version. Okay, so first of all, where are you going to get this from? You can come to this URL here, discovery.crowd-render.com slash download, and you'll be greeted with the download page. You will have to create an account, email password to get access. And if you want to get the latest one, which includes version 065, you need to support us with a paid subscription. The pro subscription and above has access to the latest stable version, which now is version 065. If you support us with an annual subscription, you'll also get Creature Kit Bash thrown in, which is a great add-on for creating sci-fi and fantasy creatures. More about that in the description below. That's how you get it. Basically click this button once you're logged in and you're supporting us, and then you should notice that you get a zip file downloaded. Let's go install that zip file straight into Blender and I'll show you how that works. So jump quickly into Blender 4.0. I'm gonna go over to the edit menu, preferences, add-ons, and then we're gonna install. Open downloads, there's the file. Click on the file, click install add-on. Now, if you're gonna do this just through Blender, it's usually pretty simple. So I'm gonna do that first and then I'm gonna describe a little later how you do this if you can't access the window of Blender. So if you're doing this on a server which doesn't have a display, then you might need to use a script which we've packaged. So I've installed the add-on and now you can see it's actually asking me to expand the add-on's preferences to complete the setup. So this is the new step. And if you have access to a windowed version of Blender, it's actually quite easy. You expand the add-on by pressing this little triangle and then you can see that you've got this warning which says CrowdRender needs to install the following dependencies. This will download four megabytes of files. Press this button and then expand the window and you can expand the logs and you can actually see it installing everything. And once this process is completed, we may have to restart Blender or your computer. The add-on should tell you, if you just wanna be safe, just reboot your computer. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Scroll all the way down, because sadly this doesn't auto-scroll for you and you can see success. Okay, please restart Blender to continue using the add-on, to start using the add-on. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna restart Blender. And once Blender's restarted, we're gonna do a simple check. We're gonna come across here and just make sure that we've got the Crowd Render panel. The Crowd Render panel appears in Blender's Render Properties section. So you click on Render Properties, and then you go scroll down and you can find it. You should also see that there's a new render engine alongside EV Workbench and Cycles called CrowdRender. So you wanna use that engine when you're actually ready to render. You can stick with Cycles up until that point. If you're developing shaders, if you're working on lighting, anything to do with shader nodes for either EV or Cycles, set it to either EV or Cycles first. Once you've finished that process, then come and switch back to CrowdRender. That's the best way to use this tool. Coming on down to our panel, you'll notice that we have a section where you choose which engine you're gonna to use to render on all of your computers. And then you can see actually a whole list of the other computers that are out there. So you can choose what computer you actually wanna use by highlighting it, clicking on it, click on the connection symbol. So the connection symbol is just this little chain icon here. Click that, it'll attempt to find its address on the network. If it doesn't do that, you can find the address yourself and type it in then press OK. You'll notice that it starts the connection process and then it should say synced. If it says sync failed, that's not terminal. It just means that some data isn't the same on both machines. This can happen spuriously. For example, if you have an RTX card on one machine but not the other, that difference shows up in things like denoising settings, which may not apply to you, but they do cause a difference between the data on the two machines, which can lead to a sync fail. You can still render when a machine is saying that it hasn't synchronized properly and just observe the results you get. And if the results are fine, then you're good. Once we've got the computers connected and synchronized, we can pretty much do whatever we want. If we make changes, we can also update them. First, I'm just gonna render real quick by pressing F12, and you can see this in action. So I'm just gonna do one frame. So you can see both machines doing separate tiles of the animation. And then once it's finished, I can show you the next thing. Okay, so let's just say we wanna make a change. Some changes you can make in real time without having to update the blend file to your other machine. So we can rotate, we can scale, and we can move stuff around. Usually these changes to objects and their transforms, they don't need a complete refresh of your blend file on every computer. I can just press F12 again. What we should see is that both machines are rendering the scene with the cube rotated, scaled, and transformed, which is what we can see now. If you do make a change and it doesn't update, all you have to do is press the resync button over here and what that will do is actually take a snapshot of your scene and upload it to the other computers replacing their copy. So it should have everything in it that you've actually got in front of you on the machine you're working on. 
Some other things I can do, I can configure what devices I want to use. So I can click on this gear icon here, which will open some settings. And I can do some stuff like I can choose CUDA, I can deselect the CPU, and then I can go to another machine, make sure it's using CPU and not GPU, and I can do all kinds of combinations of the two. And I can render using a mixture of CPU, GPU, or set them all to use their GPUs and not to use their CPUs. By default, every machine will use its CPU and sometimes its GPU as well. So just make sure you check those settings before you start a render so that you're happy with what's actually gonna happen. So I'm gonna show you now a couple of the extra scripts that we bundled. The first one is an easy way to start a headless server. And what I mean by that is you don't have to necessarily be running Blender in a window like this to be able to use that computer for rendering. So you might have, let's just say a spare machine. You don't necessarily want to have Blender visible while you're using it for rendering. So what we can do is we can actually just launch a background process of Blender and configure it to be a server. And we've written a Windows batch script that does that for you so that you don't have to fiddle around with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our project. And you can see here, we've got a new file called serverstart.bat, which lives in Bootstrap. Now for you, if you're curious about where this lives, if I go to my downloads folder, you'll notice that you can actually find this script file inside the bootstrap folder inside the zip file that you get from my website. So there it is. And this script file, basically if you double click it or run it, it will try and start a background server which will allow you to use that computer that you run the script on to render on. Um, you won't be able to obviously see Blender running. You will see a window though. So I'll do that now and just show you what that looks like. First of all, I'm gonna close down Blender on this machine because you can't really run both at the same time. You're gonna get a conflict because every time you start Blender with this add-on, it also starts one of these background processes. So to run this script, you will have to extract it somewhere. I've already got it extracted. So I'm just gonna to go to where I've already got it in my development system. By double clicking the script, you can just run it. And if everything works out, you should see something that looks like this. And you'll notice in all of your processes, you'll see that you've got a Blender process in the background mode. You can also check the command that was used, which should look something like this. And pretty much now you can walk away from that machine and use it for rendering. It will, it will respond and allow you to start a session for rendering from any other machine on the network. So that's pretty cool. And what you can do with this is you can actually locate it inside your startup folder so that every time the computer logs on, it will actually start that for you. It does mean that you will have this window visible every time you start your operating system, but you can just close it if you don't want to use it. Now, before I go on, I just want to say one quick thing about how this script works. This script looks for the most recent version of Blender that you have. So if you didn't want to run it with the most recent version of Blender, you can actually give it a command line argument to tell it use this other version. So let's just say I've got Blender 4 installed. Let's just say I don't actually want to use Blender 4. I want to use Blender 3.6 for something. I can actually use this script with Blender 3.6. So I can go to any command prompt and I can actually run the script. So here I am inside my development environment. I'm going to run bootstrap. So start.bat. So I'm going to give it the location of Blender 3.6 instead of 4.0. Oops. Program files, Blender Foundation, Blender 3.6, pressing tab to cycle through all the different versions, Blender EXE. What I'm telling the script to do is use that particular version of Blender instead of the other one. And what we should notice is it starts Blender 3.6 now, and if everything works out, we get pretty much the same readout, and that means that now the version of Blender which is waiting to start a session for you is actually gonna use Blender 3.6, not Blender 4.0. You'll notice if I run this script again, without any arguments at all, or if you just double click on it, it's gonna use Blender 4 instead because that's the latest one I have installed. In case you're wondering how this script finds the latest version of Blender, I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. So inside the script, we use a command called where, and I'm going to execute that command inside a command prompt. Use command prompt, not PowerShell. PowerShell won't work. And you can see what it does is it goes and searches in programs file for an executable called Blender and then it returns all the results and our script just picks the last one. Now we've noticed, um, for example, if you're using something like Blender's Octane build, that comes last. So one of the reasons why you can override this script is because it may not always do the thing that you want it to or you might not want to use the latest version that you've got installed. So just know that when you run this script without any arguments, it's going to do that command and it's going to pick the very last one off the list and run with that unless you tell it otherwise. Okay, so the other script that we've actually bundled with this package allows you to install the add-on 
on a machine where you don't have access to the user interface of Blender. So just a quick reminder, I'm using Windows, so this is all done in PowerShell. If you're gonna run this on a different system, you might wanna consult with the documentation for how to run that command, because I'm only gonna do Windows today. So let's break down this command bit by bit. But the first part of this command is just saying, I wanna run Blender, I wanna run it in background, I wanna run it without any other add-ons enabled at all, so that's what this part, factory startup means. Then I'm gonna give it a script. The script is the headless install script. So that one is going to be inside your add-on. So if you go to the add-on, go inside it into Bootstrap, you'll notice here it is. So you got a couple of ways of running it. Um, I downloaded the script into my downloads folder earlier and I'm just gonna run it from there. Next comes two dashes. Those two dashes basically tell Blender's command line interface to ignore everything that comes after those two dashes because otherwise Blender thinks it's meant for it and it will interpret it and try to run stuff and it will usually just buff errors because what comes after it is actually meant for our script, not for Blender. After that come the arguments for our script, which the first one and only one is file path. And that basically just tells our script, hey, this is where the add-on actually is that we're gonna want you to install. So I'm gonna go quickly through what the script actually does, the important bits. So first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna install the add-on from the path that you gave it. So do make sure that that's correct, otherwise it's not gonna work. It needs to have the correct path to where the add-on zip file is. Next, it's gonna enable it. It's gonna save your user preferences. Then it's actually gonna do the part which is really tricky without actually having Blender's interface. It's gonna install those dependencies, which you saw me do earlier when it was nice and easy because I could use Blender's interface to do it. Then pretty much you're good to go. Once the script finishes, provided you don't get any errors, you should have installed Blender and you can then run the headless server straight away. Let us know if you have any questions. We have changed how this thing installs a little bit We've tried to help out with some extra scripts that make that a bit more bearable. If you have trouble, please do let us know about it because we wanna make this as pain-free as possible. Generally, most people who have Blender installed on a system with a user interface will have no issues with this, but if you do have a problem that we haven't anticipated, it's really, really great if you can get in touch with us as soon as you can because that way we can actually look at fixing it. And that's pretty much all I have, so see you later.